curcumin is a well-studied and versatile supplement and it's extracted from turmeric. It can help many conditions like allergic rhinitis, depression, high cholesterol, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, osteoarthritis, pruritus, cancer and more. Turmeric is not bioavailable. Taking regular curcumin supplements are unlikely to provide benefits outside of the gut. Turmeric is most commonly known as the spice found in curry. It's not only known for its flavour but also its health benefits. According to the National Centre for Complementary and Alternative Medicine, there's a lot of research about turmeric and curcumin, including human studies for a variety of health conditions. Turmeric contains several major constituents that are known as curcuminoids, and these typically make up about 3% of its weight. Curcumin is known to be the most active phytochemical of the four curcuminoids that are found in the turmeric. It makes up 77%. The remaining three constituents typically come at 17% desmethoxycurcumin, 3% bisdesoxycurcumin, and the remaining most recently identified compound cyclocurcumin. It can help to reduce inflammation. It can help to balance the immune system. It's good for detoxifying and it's safe. Research suggests that turmeric extracts alone or in combination with other herbs can reduce pain and improve function in people with knee osteoarthritis. Three months of supplementation with 200 milligrams per day of a curcumin phosphatidylcholine complex decreased pain scores by 58% and increased walking distance by over 400%. Some clinical trials suggest two months of curcumin supplementation at 500 mg a day can reduce hay fever symptoms like sneezing, itching, runny nose and congestion. The authors proposed that curcumin helps to balance the immune system. A recent review of clinical trials suggested curcumin reduces depression symptoms as an add-on in people already using antidepressants. The effect of the curcumin appears to be greater for middle-aged people compared to older people. Better effects were seen in people who supplemented for at least six weeks and who used at least 1,000 milligrams per day. Additionally, various curcumin formulations were used in the studies. They all had similar effectiveness, although one specific formulation seemed to offer a non-significantly greater benefit to the people with depression than the typical curcumin piperine formulations. In older people, curcumin improved sustained attention, working memory and mood. Scientists are investigating if curcumin affects the development of new brain cells and brain-derived neurotropic factor stores in the hippocampus in chronically stressed rats, which are a model of depression in animals. Other active areas of research are looking into the effects of curcumin on blood cortisol levels and cortisol sensitivity. These are stress responses in humans. NMDA and 5-HT2C receptor activation and glutamate activity in the brain is also being studied. In mice, potential interactions and synergistic effects between curcumin and piperine and SSRI and SNRI antidepressants is also being researched. Clinical trials suggest that curcumin can reduce the markers of liver injury and liver fat buildup in people with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Scientists are exploring curcumin's non-alcoholic fatty liver disease related mechanisms in animals and cells. Some hypotheses suggest that curcumin improves the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease by raising leptin sensitivity inhibiting obesity-induced inflammation and lowering LDL cholesterol and triglycerides. According to clinical trials, turmeric at 500 mg orally three times a day for eight weeks decreases symptoms of itchy skin or uremic pruritus in patients with end-stage renal disease. Early clinical findings also suggest that curcumin reduces pruritus severity and improves the quality of life in patients with sulfur mustard induced chronic pruritus after daily use for four weeks. The effects of turmeric on cholesterol are mixed. Some studies suggest the turmeric 
lowers the bad cholesterol, the LDL, and the triglycerides, but it doesn't affect the total cholesterol or the good cholesterol. Another review suggests that curcumin does improve the good cholesterol, but doesn't affect the LDL. Further studies are needed to clarify the conflicting findings. Based on the available evidence, it's possible that curcumin has no effect on peptic ulcers. Existing studies suggest curcumin doesn't improve radiation dermatitis, which is a type of skin damage and irritation caused by radiotherapy. The existing evidence doesn't support the use of turmeric in patients with Alzheimer's disease. In a small trial, 1 to 4 grams per day of curcumin for 6 months had no effect on mental and cognitive state in patients with Alzheimer's disease. A meta-analysis of studies revealed that the turmeric group may have experienced greater cognitive decline when compared to the placebo. Data is limited by the small sample size and the patient variability, but there's not enough evidence to advise using turmeric for Alzheimer's. The findings outline how a compound can have completely different effects in animals than in human beings. It should serve as a reminder that animal findings should always be interpreted with extreme caution and healthy scepticism. Prior to the above mentioned clinical trials, many animal experiments suggested that curcumin can reverse cognitive decline, memory deficits and inflammation in the animal models of Alzheimer's. Various mechanisms were proposed, like increasing neurogenesis, brain-derived neurotropic factor and CREB, yet curcumin was a failure clinically. In patients with rheumatoid arthritis, 500 mg of curcumin and diclofenac sodium was found to be effective. Low quality evidence suggests curcumin can reduce bowel movements, diarrhoea and stomach pain in people with Crohn's disease after daily supplementation for a month. According to preliminary research in lupus patients, short-term turmeric supplementation decreases blood and protein in the urine along with systolic blood pressure. Preliminary data suggests curcumin improves cardiovascular function and it reduces oxidative stress in diabetic patients. A nine-month curcumin intervention significantly lowers the chance that pre-diabetes develops into type 2 diabetes, potentially improving the overall function of pancreatic cells. Curcumin reduced the severity of PMS in a small human study. Researchers are investigating the effects of curcumin in animals and cells on bile release from the gallbladder, multiple sclerosis, rheumatoid arthritis and psoriasis, inflammatory cytokines like interleukin 1 beta, interleukin 6 and 12, TNF alpha, viruses like influenza, candida albicans, septicemia, lung inflammation, brain cell death, glutathione levels, insulin receptor protein levels and oxidative stress. Curcumin inhibits biofilms and quorum sensing and it's being researched for activating the vitamin D receptor, which might be important for combating infections. One of the interesting things scientists are investigating about curcumin is its potential on brain DHA levels. In cells, the curcumin elevates the level of enzymes that are involved in the synthesis of DHA from ALA in both liver and brain tissues. This may turn out to have significance since fish oil DHA supplements sometimes don't increase the DHA in the brain. However, curcumin may turn out not to affect the brain's DHA in the humans. It's still unknown yet. The effects of curcumin on metal toxicity in humans is unknown. Curcumin decreases inflammatory markers in copper overload rats and it reduces aluminium induced inflammatory responses in rats' brains. Cell studies are investigating its effects on DNA damage from arsenic, mercury, fluoride and excess selenium. In mercury exposed rats, curcumin reduces oxidative stress. In iron overload rats, curcumin decreases iron accumulation in the liver and the spleen and it restored antioxidant levels. Curcumin enhances erectile function in diabetic rats. It lowers blood sugar, improves insulin sensitivity and reduces urine sugar levels. 
in animals scientists are studying if the curcumin can lower the blood sugar by stimulating insulin secretion from the pancreatic cells if it affects pancreatic regeneration affects the muscular insulin resistance or obesity bioavailable curcumin delays cataract development in diabetic rats it alleviates diabetic cardiomyopathy it's being investigated if the curcumin lessens the diabetic complications in the rat's brains, slowing mitochondrial dysfunction. In cells, scientists are studying if the curcumin activates AMPK in the muscles, leading to increased glucose uptake and inhibiting new growth and formation of fat cells. Other researchers are looking into its effects on muscle tissue generation and healing after an injury. Some researchers consider curcumin to be an oxygen radical scavenger. According to one hypothesis, it acts as an antioxidant by increasing glutathione levels and as an anti-inflammatory agent through inhibition of interleukin-8 in lung cells. Scientists are exploring its effects on numerous pathways. Lipid peroxidation and levels of glutathione, superoxide dismutase and catalase levels of vitamin C, vitamin E and DNA damage, gene expression and enzyme interactions, blood inflammatory markers, chronic fatigue and prostate inflammation, Tregs, mast cells and histamine, cholinergic activity and nicotine binding to alpha-7 acetylcholine receptors. In early phase clinical trials, a combination of curcumin and docetaxel, a chemotherapy drug, was shown to be safe in 14 advanced and metastatic breast cancer patients. The curcumin extract appeared to be safe in a small trial of patients with colorectal cancer. Given to the colorectal cancer patients during the pre-surgery waiting period, the curcumin improved the muscle wasting and the general health. Preliminary data suggests it might reduce the number of pre-cancerous rectal apparent Crypti foci in the people who are at high risk for colorectal cancer. Curcumin has mostly been researched in cancer cells. Remember, many substances have anti cancer effects in cells, including toxic chemicals like bleach. This doesn't mean they have any medicinal value. On the contrary, most natural or synthetic substances that are first researched in cancer cells fail to pass further animal studies or clinical trials due to a lack of safety or efficacy. With this in mind, scientists have explored the effects of curcumin on many pathways, like brain cancer, glioblastoma cells and oral cancer cells, T cell lymphoma cells, brain, bone and melanoma cancer cells, cancer cell mitochondria, breast cancer, colon cancer, the activity in combination with EGCG in lymphocytic leukemia cells, lung cancer cells by inhibition of interleukin-8, prostate cancer cells, pancreatic cancer cells, and activating the nuclear vitamin D receptor with theoretical implications against intestinal cancer. In animals with alcohol-induced oxidative stress, the curcumin was researched for reducing inflammation, lipid peroxidation and liver damage it was also studied in rats with kidney injury or Tylenol-induced kidney damage. However, the effects of curcumin on liver or kidney disease in humans remain unknown. The following doses were used in clinical trials. For osteoarthritis, turmeric extract, 500 mg orally, 2 to 4 times a day for 1 to 3 months. For allergic rhinitis or hay fever, 500 mg daily for 2 months. For Crohn's disease, 1 gram daily for one month, then 1.4 grams daily for a second month. For prevention of type 2 diabetes in people with prediabetes, 750 milligrams twice a day for nine months. For depression, 500 milligrams twice a day for six to eight weeks, alone or as an add-on with Prozac. For non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, 70 milligrams of curcumin daily for eight weeks. For pruritus, turmeric at 500 milligrams orally, three times per day for eight weeks. Turmeric is generally well tolerated. Some common side effects include constipation, indigestion,
diarrhea, distension, gastroesophageal reflux, nausea, vomiting, and other gut issues. Very rarely, curcumin can cause pruritus or pitting edema. Applied to the skin, turmeric may cause an allergic contact dermatitis. In high dose in vitro models, curcumin can cause cytotoxicity and DNA damage. At high doses, it's suggested that curcumin may actually induce reactive oxygen species, leading to DNA damage. Cellular and animal research suggests curcumin can decrease sperm motility and density. Curcumin may inhibit enzymes that are involved in the final step of testosterone synthesis. Its effects on fertility in humans are unknown. The same study states because humans can consume up to 8 grams of turmeric per day without apparent side effects, consuming the curcumin orally may not increase the curcumin levels in the blood, enough to inhibit the testosterone synthesis. In vitro curcumin increases LRRK2 mRNA in protein. This is a gene whose expression has been positively associated with Parkinson's disease. This could, in theory, lead to an increased risk of Parkinson's disease. However, the effect of curcumin on Parkinson's in humans remains unknown. Adding piperine from black pepper likely increases the absorption of curcumin into the blood. In fact, researchers have estimated that it can increase the bioavailability of curcumin by as much as 2,000%. Consuming it with oil was the traditional method of turmeric consumption, and a fat like coconut oil, ghee or butter can also help to increase its bioavailability. For more information about herbs, supplements and natural treatment plans, check out my website.